Hey everybody, it's Brett. Thanks for dropping by my channel. So um, today I wanted to talk about some upcoming big books. I'm a, I am someone, I, I love big books. I really had to, I really had to fight the impulse to say, and I cannot lie. So, okay, so these are big books that are not, um, uh, because they're big um, in terms of they're going to be a massive hit, although some of them I think could be a massive hit in a big book that way. I'm talking about huge, all of these have over a 500, at least a 500 page page count. Um, they are door stoppers, but for me, some of my favorite books last year were the big books, the the Bee Sting, um, the Covenant of Water, things that you could really dig into. I love to get lost in a massive tome. I'm not saying I would choose it all the time, but I think they could be intimidating for some people. But I also now have like learned the way to kind of break it down, do it in small bites. But I think that there is something that is so satisfying after going through a huge book of especially when it's good. I mean, not if it's bad. And if it's bad, I'm going to put it down anyway. But if it's good, God, it's there's nothing like it. And it just feels so epic and amazing by the time you finish. So that's what these four books are. All of them <clears throat> are coming out. None of them are out yet. That's what that means. So they're things to put on your TBR. The first one, The Second Coming by Garth Risk Halberg. Um, Garth Risk Halberg, I haven't seen a book from him since the book City of Fire, which was his first novel, which, by the way, almost a thousand pages, was a massive story set in New York City that was just recently made into a series on Apple TV. Uh, and part of that I discovered when I was... Um, going through and looking up research about this and so on and so forth. And it said, you know, now on Apple TV, um, which I was aware of the show when it came out. I just didn't make the correlation that it was that story. But this is his new book. So I'm going to read you from the back. It says, an intimate epic that plunges us deep into the lives of a teenage girl and her father as they navigate love, grief, betrayal, and redemption. When 13-year-old Jolie Aspern drops her phone into the subway tracks in 2011, her estranged dad Ethan seems like the furthest thing from her mind. A convicted felon and a recovering addict, Ethan has long struggled to see beyond himself. But then, a call from New York makes him fear his daughter's in deeper trouble than anyone realizes. And believing he's the only one who can save her, her, he decides to return home. So begins the journey that will, in time, push Jolie and Ethan, child and adult, apart and together, different yet the same, out past their depths. Full of yearning and revelation, the second coming is at once an incandescent feat of storytelling and an exploration of an enduring mystery. Can the people we love ever really change? So, I don't know, it sounds great. This came from um, Knopf, and thank you for this. This will be coming out May 28th, so set your calendar. That's the first. All right, next up is Claire Lombardo's Same As It Ever Was, um, and thank you to Doubleday for this. This right now is clocking in at a very minuscule 491 pages, and it will probably be more when it gets published. Claire Lombardo wrote The Most Fun We Ever Had, which was such a fantastic family uh, family story. Um, and I, apparently Reese Witherspoon's company is doing it as a either a movie or a miniseries. So let me read you the back of this one. Julia Ames is living an improbably lovely life. Despite her inclination towards self-sabotage, she has found herself in midlife with a husband she loves, two happy children, and a quiet, contented existence. When she bumps into an old friend she hasn't spoken to in years, a friend who almost ended her marriage decades before, Julia finds herself spinning out of control. 
This brilliant, full-hearted novel, a worthy successor to Claire Lombardi's beloved debut, follows Julia over the course of several tumultuous months of the present, as well as through the 50-some years that formed her from a chaotic childhood in Chicago to the claustrophobic early days of motherhood, which led her to risk everything in a desperate bid for connection. In the tradition of Elizabeth Strout, Ann Patchett, and Jonathan Franzen, I mean, listen to those three. Same as it ever was examines the complete and complex trajectory of one woman's life and asks what it takes to form and to keep a family. I mean, this sounds so good. It's completely up my alley. I have a feeling it will be completely up some of yours. Um, this, 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 this. This is on sale June 18th, so mark it down. It's not that far away. Claire Lombardo, same as it ever was. Um, okay. <clears throat> Next up, I've talked about this book before, but I'm, you know, I've got to, it's, it's big. It's, I'm excited and I think it's going to be big. Chris Whitaker's All the Colors of the Dark out June 25th. Thank you, Crown, for this uh, advanced copy. Okay, so I don't know how many of you read We Begin at the End, which was Chris's f- debut novel. It was one of my favorite books that year. It's such a fantastic, fantastic story. It is, uh, can't put it down, um, edge of your seat, thriller, family story. It's heartbreaking. Oh, my God. It just gave me all the feels. So when he announced that you know his new book was coming out, I immediately was like, sign me up, get it to the door, inject it into my veins, all the feelings, need it now. Let me read you what this is about. And I also have to say, I think this is a great cover. Really cool. All right. From the New York Times bestselling author of We Begin at the End comes a soaring thriller and an epic love story that spans decades. 1975 is a time of change in America. The Vietnam War is ending. Muhammad Ali is fighting Joe Frazier. And in the small town of Montclair, Missouri, girls are disappearing. When the daughter of a wealthy family is targeted, the most unlikely hero emerges, Patch, a local boy with one eye who saves the girl and in doing so leaves heartache in his wake. Patch and those who love him soon discover that the line between triumph and tragedy has never been finer and that their search for answers will lead them to truths that can be losing one another. A missing person mystery, a serial killer thriller, a love story, a unique twist on each. Chris Whitaker has written a novel about what lurks in the shadows of obsession and the blinding light of hope. I mean, come on. This little baby is clocking in right now at 592 podges. Love it. I'm so here for it. Mark it down, June 25th, All the Colors of the Dark, Chris Whitaker. And if you haven't read We Begin at the End, you could do your prep work and read that now so you get a feel for him, and and there you go. All right, my final book, um, which comes out July 16th, I'm going to preface it before I say it, and it's not like like in the grand final one. It's only the final because I'm just going by dates. But it is a honkin' jahonker coming in at 672 pages. I'm, uh, whatever, here it is. Okay, Lev Grossman's The Bright Sword. First of all, I don't know how many of you read the Magician's Trilogy. Um, if you have not, it is so good. Um, one of the early descriptions of the Magician's Trilogy said, um, Harry Potter says fuck and that's kind of what it is it's like an adult version of Harry Potter where these kids who go to the school they're not they're they're like high school kids go to the school and what happens and you know facing an evil as you do and but it's really interesting the characters are incredibly well drawn and it's dark um and it's sophisticated i loved it it was made into a series called the magicians that was on sci-fi that i think is on netflix now and is actually pretty good i haven't watched all of it but it's it's well cast it's an interesting cast it's sexy and um and good actors so this is lev grossman's take on the king arthur story 
I mean, they could have like really, he could have milked it and done multiple um, books on this one. And for all I know, he is. But let me read you. Um, and by the way, the first, I love that the quote, it says, for anyone who's ever craved a seat at the round table, utterly enchanting by this author named Rebecca Yaros, who wrote The Fourth Wing, which I think is hilarious. Um, only because she suddenly becomes so big, she's now getting quoted. Okay. A young, gifted knight named Colum arrives at Camelot to compete for a spot on the round table. But he's too late. <clears throat> King Arthur died two weeks ago at the Battle of Camlin, leaving no heir and only a handful of the knights of the round table survive. They aren't the heroes of legend like Lancelot or Gawain. They're the oddballs of the round table from the edges of the story, like Palamedes, the Saracen knight, and Sir Dagonet, Arthur's fool, who was knighted as a joke. They're joined by Nimue, who was Merlin's apprentice until she turned on him and buried him under a hill. Together, this ragtag fellowship will set out to rebuild Camelot in a world that has lost its balance. God has abandoned Britain. The fairies and monsters and old gods are returning, led by Morgan Le Fay, and rival factions are forming around the disgraced Lancelot and the fallen Queen Guinevere. It's up to Colum and his companions to reclaim Excalibur and make this ruined world whole again. But first, they'll have to face the truth of why the lonely, brilliant King Arthur fell. The first major Arthurian epic of the new millennium, the bright sword is steeped in tradition full of duels and quests, magic swords and fisher kings. It also sheds a fresh light on Arthur's Britain, a complex nation struggling to come to terms with its bloody history. The Bright Sword is a story about imperfect men and women who must reforge a broken land in spite of being broken themselves. The Bright Sword. Ah! Anyway, I think this sounds so crazy good. Um, again, if you were a Magicians fan, I would say you absolutely have to put this on your list. If you haven't checked out The Magicians, check out The Magicians Trilogy. It's great as well. But especially for all my fantasy, fantasy history people, guys, get excited. July 16th. So there you have it. Four big, big chunkster books coming out soon all of which I think sound fantastic. Hopefully at least one of those has uh, piqued your interest. Put it in your calendar, pre-order it from wherever you pre-order your books. I hope you're all having a uh, fantastic week wherever you are, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.